It's my life story. People have been telling me for uh, 20 years now, write a book, make a movie, do something. Everybody always says write a book. Anyhow, here we go. I'll start it when I was in third grade. Um, I used to have long hair, and the nuns used to bug me, tell me to go get a haircut. And I never would. So uh, finally one day, they uh, they gave me a dollar or some you know, amount of money back then. It was cheap. The haircut was 50 cents, I think. And uh, they told me to go get a haircut and don't come back until I do. Yeah. So I went down to the barber. Now I'm talking, geez, 1950s, early 50s, mid 50s, third grade. Let's see, 10 years old. Oh, yeah, 1954, 55, someplace in there. And you know, I go down and tell him, give me a, give me a Mohegan. <laughs> And he says, uh, basically, are you sure? I said, yeah, I just take everything out the sides and leave the center up there. So he did. And uh, sure enough, I go back to school with the Mohegan. And they went freaking bananas. <laughs> but there was nothing they can do, you know. Uh, so ever since then, basically, I've been sort of a kind of a rebel. Never really did uh, conform to everything the way the way it is you know um, so my you know my life's going on like normal as a little later on that year 4th of July that summer I get I go and I buy all these firecrackers out this guy and this is my experience with the first experience with the police or whatever you want to call them so I'm blowing off my firecrackers, and sure enough, here comes the cops. They want to know where I got the firecrackers. I'm not telling them where I got the firecrackers. So they put me in a cell. I'm only about 11 years old by then, right around 11. And they said, we're not going to let you out until you tell us where you get the firecrackers. So basically, I, you know... I gave in, but they told me they weren't going to make me do anything. Just tell me what, tell them where they got them. What do they do? This is when I learned you don't trust the police. They make me go to the guy, go up to the door, and buy more firecrackers. Hmm. So now this guy knows who I am, and they bust him. And that was my first experience with the police, and I had never trusted the whole, let's say, establishment after that, probably. I never really did after that. The, the nuns used to, I mean, I, I got along pretty good, um, but I was kind of a rebel, so the nuns would uh, look basically for sometimes for things for me to do. They would uh, give me money, tell me to get on my bike, and go over to Pittston, which was a another city near a town near us and pay the bills so everybody everybody knew me you know uh, as, a, as a guy that can go and get things done for him uh, around the neighborhood I did chores for people people would give me money I'd uh, back then we had um, coal and we used to um, have to empty the ashes out of your furnace so people would pay me a couple bucks to come and empty their ashes every week. And I was also the paper boy. And I was also the, if they needed something from the store, they'd get Roy, send Roy over to the store. And I'd go over and buy him cigarettes. Actually, one lady used to call the bar and they'd give me a quart of beer to take, <laughs> take back to her. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. They'd give me a quart of beer. Um, you know, speaking of beer, in third grade, I'll never forget this. I go home with my one friend. We used to call him Spooky. His name was Gary Onushak. And uh, we go to his house. His parents both worked. So he was a key, one of the latchkey kids, one of the first latchkey kids I ever knew. And uh, we get to the house, and he goes over to the refrigerator, and he takes out a quart of beer. 
and it's half empty. And he pours himself a glass of beer, and he says, do you want some? I said, I said that's what you, you get for lunch? He said, that's what I drink for lunch every day. A half a quart of beer, I said. He said, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. So I, I tried some. I didn't like it. I never really did like beer after that, but I didn't like it. It tasted sour to me. And uh, it's kind of amazing to me that, you know, a kid in third grade back then, <laughs> that was his, his lunch, man, you know. Uh, he probably drank himself to death later on in life. I don't know. I lost track of him after, after grade school. So anyhow, going on, we had this uh, sewer out in front of the house. And I was out there with my little brother one day. And <laughs> I got a gallon of gas and I poured it down the sewer. And I don't know what possessed me, but that's what I did. <laughs> so I, I told my little brother, Joe, who's now dead, God bless him. I said, hey, light this match, see if it's still down there. <laughs> he, he lights that freaking match, drops it down the sewer. Holy shoot, I figured I'd better get out of Dodge, man. That whole street blew up. I mean, the whole street just shook because that, that gas ran right down the whole sewer line, right down the whole street. And when it went off, a big flame comes shooting up out of the sewer. And my, my little brother was looking down, and it just burned his eyebrows off and, and burned the part of his hair off the front of his head. I looked at him and said, oh, God, I better get out of Dodge, man. I'm going to get killed for this one, man. But, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff uh, stuff I did. Used to pull around bows and arrows and, you know, regular kid stuff. So I used to take a soda cap and we used to bend it around uh, a reed, a swamp reed, which usually are straight. And uh, that would be our, our arrowhead, would be a soda cap bent into the shape of a, a diamond type. So I'm out in the back, I'm shooting uh, shooting my bow and arrow. My little brother runs right in front of it, and I get him right in the head. <laughs> I mean, blood coming out right in the temple. I, oh, my God, I couldn't believe it. He just ran right in front of it. Nothing I could do. I could hide from my mother. I mean, she's going to kill me. But I wasn't trying to do it. I wasn't nothing. He just ran out there, you know. Uh, some of the, you know some of the stuff stuff that happens, you know. <laughs> Let me see here. Oh man, there's so much stuff. Me and my buddies used to uh, raid cherry trees, right? We'd climb up in the trees at night and eat cherries. So me and my buddy we went up one night and pigged out on this guy's cherry tree. Didn't think any of it. <laughs> the next morning, on the way to school, we go by that cherry tree, and those cherries were filled with worms. Oh, no. <laughs> we ate them all night long. We were eating worms, man. <laughs> oh, God. And we didn't get sick. It was amazing. We didn't get sick. But, uh, <laughs> you know, let me see here. Oh, <laughs> It was this old lady, man, and uh, like I said, I used to do chores, and I'd shovel snow for people. Well, this one lady wanted me to shovel her whole backyard out all the time, and she'd take me in and give me cookies and milk, and there was a bar, and I'd sit at the bar in this house, a regular bar, I mean, like you would in a, in a nightclub, a big bar. It was in a house, though. I, you know, as a kid, I didn't think that much about it. And uh, I'd sit at that bar, and she'd give me cookies and milk, and I'd go out and finish shoveling the whole yard out. But come to find out, the reason I was shoveling that whole, there was doors and rooms. It was a whorehouse <laughs> in the middle of the neighborhood, two blocks away. I mean, I was born in this, you know, I was raised in Catholic school and the whole nine yards. Everybody was holy and all this stuff, and there's this little old lady. She's got a whorehouse. And the reason I shoveled the whole backyard is so nobody could see all the cars parked in there at night. It was a regular whorehouse. <laughs> I wonder if that's still there, you know. I, 
I know she, I, I know she's gone, but I don't know if the whole house is gone or not. <laughs> Absolutely, Mrs. Walsh. I used to I used to deliver the uh, the newspapers, morning newspaper, four o'clock in the morning. And what I would do, or did a couple times, is uh, <laughs> we had these Gabby neighbors, you know. So I'd take the, go to the cemetery and get some flowers and I'd hang them on her door because she was old and they would figure she died. Oh no. <laughs> and the next, next morning, man, oh, Mrs. Walsh died. And I'd be sitting there laughing my ass off. The whole, whole neighborhood would think Mrs. Walsh died and <laughs> sooner or later she would emerge <laughs> and they realized she didn't die. <laughs> That was, that was stuff we used to do as a kid, you know. My one buddy used to get, we used to collect snakes. And there was this one old guy who used to always sort of bug us. And he would take a whole bottle of snakes and throw them at this guy. A big, one of these uh, big um, canning jars. Yeah. And he'd be filled with snakes, stuff. Live, live snakes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, live and, snakes. And yeah, throw and then, them on then, 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 He'd throw the whole bottle at them. <laughs> And snakes just all over the place, man. You know what else he, he, he used to do? He used to do, he'd, he, he'd defecate in a bag, light it on fire and knock on the door. People would come out and start stomping on the bag. And it was filled with shit. We burning. Used, yeah, burning shit. We used to call, call them blivet bags. Blivet <laughs> So you grew up next to a whorehouse. You, you had a David and Goliath moment where you got someone right between the eyes. Nobody you know. ever, you know, I don't think, I don't know if anybody, if they never recognized that as a whorehouse or if they knew it was a whorehouse. But I'll tell you why, and a lot of people don't know this. This was much later on in life. I was up in Sault Ste. Marie. There was a whorehouse in Sault Ste. Marie to this day from the Second World War. And the lady pays her taxes every year and uh, the government of Michigan takes her taxes, and since they take her taxes, she's a legal business. And she's been getting around, around that since the Second World War, that place has been there. It's up on the, on the American side in Sault Ste. Marie. I won't forget it when I was up there. How did, I said, how the heck does she stay open? They said, they take her taxes every year. As long as they take her taxes, her accountant sends the money in, they take the taxes, and so they either gotta return the taxes, or shut her down. They, they'd rather have the tax money, I guess. <laughs> and anyhow, later on, um, I uh, went to a Catholic grade school. Then I, I went over and I transferred. I had to go to a uh, Catholic high school over in uh, Pittston, which is known as the murder capital of the world at that time. Wow. Walter Winchell used to call it the uh, place to commit the perfect murder. All I know is uh, I was born and raised in an Italian area with a lot of Italian people, let's put it that way. You're Scottish uh, yourself, mostly, right? And the, uh, pardon? You're Scottish, mostly, right? I'm Scottish, I'm, I'm Scottish. I, uh, I trace my family back to the 11th century, Ayrshire, Scotland, where we come from. We're, we're descendants of the Vikings. Uh, that's, uh, but that's as far back as tax records go, is 1140, actually. As far back as you can go, there's no records beyond that. That's where my country, my my family comes from originally. But um, the uh, let's say the Italians ran the neighborhood ba basically. Okay, I mean, I used to sell things called numbers back then, and this was my cousin actually that had them. He was a, he was a uh, sort of a big deal around town. And we, we, used got a couple minutes left. we used to sell these things called Legion tickets. I didn't know what they, they really were. I did a little, a little later on, but the Legion tickets had numbers on them. It was a numbers racket. We used to play the numbers racket. I mean, this was, you know, just regular neighborhood stuff, you know. We were selling numbers. <laughs> um, so anyhow, I go to school over there in Pittston, and, uh, you know, I, a whole, whole, whole different group of friends, everything. Everything changed because now, all the kids I grew up with um, went to different schools. Not that many went over to Pittston. Actually, I think I was the only one out of our graduating class that went on to, to St. John's. Here, let, let's stop and start. We have a 20-minute limit.